if you just come to the center of your mats and we'll begin with a quick warm up. So we'll just roll the shoulders back and down, maybe five times backwards. And then five times forwards. When you've done five times in both directions, you're just going to come back to neutral. Inhale to lift one arm up, reaching up tall. Exhale, reach all the way over to the opposite side. Inhale, back center, sweep, switching over the arms as you come through that midline. And then exhale to reach over to the other side. We're just going to do three rotations on each side. Just moving in your own time. Last one each way. And then bring the arms out wide as you come back up for that last one. From here, we'll just wrap the arms around the body as you twist to look behind. Think about lifting and lengthening as you come through that midline. Couple of twists each way. One more in each direction. And then come all the way back to centre. Take a nice deep breath in as you reach your hands up above the head. Soften the knees, hinge at the hips and come all the way down into your Uttanasana. Forward fold. We'll take ragdoll variations, so taking opposite hand to opposite elbow, just gently draw the chest over the thighs, swinging side to side, getting into those hips, those glutes, that low back and hamstrings. And then just gently take your hands to the floor, place them either side of your feet. From here, inhale as you lift the heels off the floor, coming down into a crouch position, chest to thighs, nose to knees. Exhale as you push up and back into your forward fold. We're going to do three of those. So inhale to crouch. Exhale to fold. Inhale to crouch. Exhale to fold. Last one. Inhale to crouch. Exhale to fold. From here, take the hands to the front two corners of the mat. Step the feet back and come into your down facing dog position. So just take a moment there to spread the fingers, press the crown of the head through the arms, bend the knees to begin with, and just gently pulse through the shoulders, opening up the thoracic spine, and then gently pedal out through the feet for a few reps as well. When you've taken a few breaths in each movement, you're gonna take Right hand out, sorry, right foot outside of right hand. Drop the back knee to the floor. Inhale to lift and twist with the right hand up towards the ceiling. Exhale, tap that elbow to the floor. You're going to do three elbow taps. So inhale to lift and twist. Exhale to tap. Inhale to lift and twist. Exhale to tap. Last one. Inhale to lift and twist. Exhale to tap. And then step back to down facing dog and we'll repeat on the other side. So left foot comes outside of left hand, dropping the back knee to the floor. You're going to do more elbow twists. So inhale to lift and twist with the left hand up towards the ceiling. Exhale to tap. So three more. Inhale to lift. Exhale to tap. Inhale to lift. Exhale to tap. The last one. Inhale to lift. Exhale to tap. Replace the hand, step back to your down facing dog position. Walk the hands all the way to the back of the mat, find your Uttanasana forward fold. Heel turn the feet out to the edges of the mat, find your spot stance. Inhale as you come all the way, extend the Uttanasana palms together at the top. Exhale as you come down into the bottom of that garland pose. Just take a moment there to bounce it out, open up those hips, keep that chest nice and high. And then we're going to take left hand to the floor. Inhale to lift and twist to the right with the right hand. Exhale, release, switch sides. Inhale to lift and twist to the left with the left hand. Exhale, release. Both hands to the floor. Heel toe the feet back underneath your hips. Walk your hands all the way to the front of the mat and we'll take a vinyasa. So finding your plank position, option to drop the knees if you need to. Exhale, low plank or knees, chest, chin. Inhale, press up to cobra. Exhale, tuck the toes and press back to down facing dog. From here, walk the feet all the way in toward the hands, coming back into your Uttanasana forward fold. Last chance if you want to, to take that ragdoll variation for just a few breaths. And then whenever you're 
you're ready. Inhale as you come all the way up. Extend to Tadasana. Exhale. Release the arms. Shake it all up. And you should be feeling a little bit more warm and flexy. So I'm just going to get rid of this whilst it's over my head. It's not helping me teach. Um, and I will set up the class. So for those of you who haven't done this class before, this is a Tabatha star class. We're going to do three rounds of five different movements. Each movement you're going to be working for 45 seconds. In between that you'll have a 25 second break where I'll demonstrate the next movement. This microphone or speaker will count you in so you'll hear yourself be counted in and counted out. Um, I'll guide you through the rest um, and if you need to grab some water or anything in between then feel free for that too. Um, so the first round is a mobility round. If you have one of these to hand, go ahead and grab it. If you don't, don't worry. We'll do some arm circles instead. Sorry, I should have said bring your yoga straps today. Um, and we'll begin. So I'll demonstrate the first movement now. The first one, we're going to go down onto our stomachs and we're going to come into a prone IYT. So it's your mobility round. This is all about mobilising the joints, finding your range of movement and improving on it. So taking the arms out in front of you, straight up above, Finding that kind of eye position, you're going to inhale to lift the hands up off the floor, feet can stay on the floor. You're then going to bring them back to a kind of wide arm position, and then you're going to reach them forwards and find a Y. Then you're going to bring them back, reach them out to the side, find a T, bring them back to centre, reach them forwards and find your eye. So you're just literally going to do your I, Y, T's. If you find that your lower back or your back starts to ache because you're using that strength to keep yourself lifted. Feel free to come back down, reset, and then lift back up again. So I will set the clock now. So if you will find yourself on the center, on your mats in a prone position, and you'll have a 10 second count in. So in five, four, three, two. One. So you're finding yourself in that prone position, inhaling to lift, coming up into that eye position, and then bringing the arms back. Squeeze those shoulder blades together, and then reach the arm forward to find that Y. Bring the arms back, squeeze those shoulder blades together again, reach them out to the side, find that T. So this is all about scapular stability and improving the strength and the stability in your upper back and shoulder region, which is where a lot of people get pain injuries so just keep moving all the way through you can do this fast seconds. you can do this slow you have just coming up to five seconds left on the clock and in three two one relax the next movement is a down dog with a hip twist so you're going to come into your down dog position spend a bit of time just feeling that position and then you're going to take one leg up high behind you into three leg dog, bend at the knee and just play with that hip twist. So if you want to, you could spend 30 seconds, or half the time, sorry, whatever that works out at, 22 seconds on one side and then 22 seconds on the other. So set yourself up, I'll tell you when it's half time, we're going to open up that hip, play with that range of movement, you can bring the leg all the way through and under and kick all the way back and over if you wanted to. So play with that range of movement, see if you can find that twist, take it all the way over. If you want to take it all the way over into 12, then you could really open up that side body and then switch sides. So left leg goes high if you were on your right, right leg goes high if you were on your left. Play with that hip twist again. Open up that hip flexor. 10 seconds. Figure out that range of movement. And then if you want to take it all the way over, feel free to take it to wild me. And rest. Coming back to the back of your mat, sitting in child's pose, we're going to go through to cobra and then cat. So finding yourself in extended child's pose, you're going to scoop the chest through, keeping it nice and low as you press up into cobra, inhale. And then as you exhale, push up and back into cat pose, pushing the shoulder blades apart, finding that arch position. Sitting back down to child's pose and repeat. Let's go. So scoop the chest all the way through, press up into cobra, and then pull the shoulder blades apart, round that upper back, suck that navel up and back, find cat, sit back in extended child's pose. So just keep moving through each movement, feeling the transition as well, feeling how your body moves your 
over halfway now. So maybe just try and get one or two more rotations in. 10 seconds. Moving all the way to the end. And in three, two, one, relax. Yes. The next movement is a 90-90 with a hip thrust. So you're going to find that 90 degree angle with the legs. You're going to take it all the way over to the other side. Hands can go on the floor if you want to. And then you're going to lift, open up that hip, come back seated, go over to the other side, thrust and come back to seated. So we're just opening up the hip in each movement. Let's go. So set yourself up, find that 90-90 angle with the legs, open up that movement, really squeeze the glutes, push the hips through, come back to seated, and then switch sides. So this is a really good hip opener. If you move around a lot, you can always use your hands on the floor to lift and repeat. So you're just coming up to halfway, see if you can match the same Absolutely. number of reps as you've done on the other side, or at least finish equally. And then we just have one more movement left. You've got 10 seconds to go. 10 seconds. And then in five, four, three, two, one. Rest. Relax. The last movement is simple arm circles. So you're just literally going to take the arms up and back doing big or small circles, when we get to halfway, we're going to change direction. If you have a yoga strap to hand, I love it that some of you have already come practice, <laughs> grab a hold of it, and then you're going to take it from your hip crease in quite a wide stance, nice straight arms, taking it up and back, pushing it up and over. So as you're doing this, the important thing in both situations is not to flare the ribs as you go back with those arms. So try and keep those ribs locked down, rather than Arching through the upper back and coming back to the front again. If you've got the strap and you're finding this is quite easy now, you can take half a twist in, narrow your grip, challenge your range of motion. So you're over halfway. This is a really good way to open up the shoulders, loosen off those rotator cuffs and improve your range of motion overhead as well. Really good. Nice work. And relax. You have a whole minute's rest now. Uh, the next round is our strengthening round. So um, we've got five movements again. Have a glass of water if you need to. Um, and I'll begin demonstrating the next movement in just a second. So the first movement of today is a side plank. So we're going to come onto our sides. You can have the knee on the floor or the knee lifted. If you've got the knee lifted, feet can stack on top, in front, behind, wherever they need to go, or you could even try and do star plank. You can either hold this for half time and then switch over, or you could lift and lower that top leg. If you're comfortable and you can do star, then you can lift, take the knee into the armpit, straighten and then come back down. My balance is awful today. So you've got five seconds. Set yourself up, find that side plank position, lift those hips away, really think about using that underbody, that underarm to push the ground away, lift the hips away, squeeze that side core. From here you can either do those pulses if you want to, if you feel stable and of course if you're on your knee you can always do this too, that's still an option. So whichever movement you're at, switch over now, we're halfway, changing the sides, finding your stable position on the other side, and then going back to the variation that you just picked for the opposite side. 10 seconds. So you've got 10 seconds left on the clock. Work all the way to the end. And yes. relax. The next movement is a plank walk. So you're simply going to come up onto your hands and knees, finding that plank position. Option to drop the knees if you need to. You're just going to come down onto your forearms, and then rotate back up, making sure you rotate in both directions as you go up and down. If you're on your knees, it's exactly the same. Hips and shoulders all in one line. Let's go. Lifting and lowering. So keep that core tight, keep that pelvis tucked. Don't let it sag, don't let it peak up. Keep 
working all the way to the end if you need to. You can have a bit of a rest in child's pose halfway. This is quite intense on the arms. So halfway is coming up. Now if you want to sit back, take two breaths in child's halfway pose. Yeah. And then reset, you can. The next movement you will be off your arms. So keep it, keep going, you've got this. Well done, all the way to the end. Ten seconds. Ten seconds left, so there's at least two more plank walks. <laughs> and in three, two, one. Next movement is a locust lift. So option one, you're just going to inhale to lift and lower chest and thighs off the floor. Option two, so you're just lifting and lowering. Option two, you can hold for a count of three, two, one. Lower again. Option four, you can hold for the entire time. Or option three, sorry, you can hold for the entire time. Or option four, you can add that arch rock into this movement. So really think about squeezing the glutes, pointing the toes, squeezing the inner thighs, creating tension from head to toe. So don't just let the arms hang all floppy and the legs hang all floppy. Be super tight. Reach forwards, reach backwards. Have that strong whole body hold. You're coming up to halfway. So you can take a break, you can reset if you're holding. Or crack on and see if you can get all the way to the end. You have just 15 seconds left. So you can do this all the way to the end. Nice work, girls. 10 seconds. Really good. All the way to the end. And then we have two more movements left. And relax. Yes. Next movement, we're going to come up into that down facing dog position. Left leg is going to slide through and under, so we're twisting out to the right. Inhale to lift the right arm up to the heart sky, and then you're just simply going to lift that left leg up and down, away from the floor. So this is a fallen angel leg lift. At half time, you're going to switch over to the other side, and do the same Let's on go. the other side. If this is too much for you with the leg lift, then feel free to just hold it, and take your time to just find that nice position in that that air. Uh, in that pose, I can't think of my words today. If you want to try and push it further, see if you can hold that leg up the entire time without the pulse, or just not touch the floor. You're coming up to halfway, so switch there. sides. Find yourself in that fallen triangle on the other side, and then you're pulsing that leg off the floor again. 10 seconds. You have less than 10 seconds on the clock, see if you can pulse it at least two more times. And in three, two, one, relax. The next movement is a crunch curl. So you're going to come into a seated position. Find yourself in this tuck position, toes on the floor, toes lifted, wherever you need to be. You're going to then extend one leg as you lower the body down, keeping that hollow boat position, shoulders off the floor, and then come back to that crunch, alternating from side to side. If this is too much, feel free to just do regular tuck crunches, whatever you need to do. We're just working on those cores, those abs. So single leg extensions. If this is too easy, you could switch this to a V-sit. So you're finding yourself in that crunch position or in that extended position and then opposite hand to opposite leg halfway there. as you come up. You're over halfway. Keep moving all the way to the end. You have 15 seconds left on the clock and then a whole minute's worth of rest in front of you. So keep working all the way to the end. Good job. Really, really good. Amazing. So strong yes. on you. And rest. <laughs> so you've got a whole minute's worth of rest. We're into our uh, third and final round, which is your cardio round. So do take on some water. You are going to sweat. I have a dog in the background. He's <laughs> not interested in playing with his bones, so. though. And I'll demonstrate the first movement. So the first movement is a variation on what we were doing before in that first round with the locust lifts. You're just literally going to inhale to lift legs and arms off the floor, and then you're going to pulse the arms and the legs. So keeping nice and tight is key to this one. If you need to, relax, exhale, come down to the floor, reset, and pulse again. So you could do three to five pulses, relax, lift again, three to five pulses, relax, lift again. 
So pick the variation that suits you. Set yourself up. You've got three seconds. Find that prone position on the mat. Lift the arms and legs and begin with that pulse. So I'll count you when you get to halfway. You can always reset at halfway and then lift up. So in five, four, three, two, one, you're coming up to halfway, so if you want to reset, take a break, take a breather, you can. If you want to carry on, then crack on. Well done, good for you. So you're going to lift up into that pulse and keep pulsing ten all seconds. the way to the end. You have less than 10 seconds left on that clock now. And in three, two, one, relax. Yes. Next movement is a down facing dog to chair jump. So setting yourself up in that down facing dog. Bending at the knees, hopping forwards, catching in chair, and then jump, and then jump back to plank, push back to down facing dog. So you're literally jumping at either end. So keep moving, keep breathing. The more you do, the sweatier you're going to get. So really brace your core in that chair, sit back and down in those heels. You're jumping from front to back of the mat, and then jumping out of that chair when you get there. See if you can stick it, it's a really good one for your stability. It's also a really good heart raiser as you're about to find out. You're coming up to halfway, so keep going. See if you can match the same number of reps again. Keep moving all the way to the end. Nice work. Really good. 10 seconds. And in five, Four, three, two, one, relax. The next movement is a simple tuck to boat. So option to just do repetitive tuck crunches, that's absolutely fine. Option two, to find that tuck position, so setting yourself up and then extending the legs into that tuck to boat. You can always do single leg extensions too. So it's to keep engaged in that core, keep that compression zone active, Let's keep go. moving. So set yourself up. You can have your hands on the floor if that's easier for you, whichever variation you're picking. Just pick your variation and try and work through it at a fairly rapid pace. So if that means that you need to slow it down, absolutely slow it. Uh, sorry, if that means you need to scale it back to a simpler movement, absolutely scale it back so that you can get more reps have in. There. You are over halfway, and you have just two more movements left. So, in 10 seconds, 10 seconds, we'll be moving on to the next movement. So work all the way to the end. See if you can keep going. You're probably feeling the burn now. Nice work. And relax. The next movement is a wild thing twist. So we're gonna find ourselves in that down facing dog. Take the left leg up and over to the right. Tap the hip to the floor. Lift up into that bridge or wild thing pose. Come back to down facing dog and switch over to the other side. So we're going to try and speed it up, getting that hip tap in every time. Reaching back and over. So set yourself up, find that down facing dog position. Take that left leg up and over to the right. Find that extension as you come into that wild thing on the left and then switch over. So you're just rotating round from side to side. Moving all the way through. You're halfway, so see if you can there. match the number of reps that you've just done. Keep going all the way to the end. You're doing so, so well. There is 10 seconds left now on the clock. And then we are on to our final movement. Rest. The final movement of today, we're going to come from the back of the mat, walk our hands all the way to the front of the mat, find a planching plank, so send your shoulders forwards over that, over the um, fingers, walk the hands all the way back, jump, catch in chair. So you're going back again, resetting, finding that plunge, coming all the way back, jump, catch in chair. So set yourself up, walk the hands all the way forward. Large those shoulders over those fingertips and then walk the hands all the way back, jump, catch in chair. As you're doing that plunge, maybe hold for a count of one, two, and then really walk the hands back as close as you can. Add that jump. Make it harder, really push the ground away when you're plunging. Halfway there. Or add a real high jump. So really push your jump. 
as you come back to that chair. You are over halfway. You have just over 10 seconds left Ten on seconds. the clock. And you are nearly at the end of this workout. Well done, girls. You're doing so well. All the way to the end. And relax. <laughs> Grab some water. Take a moment to catch your breath. And then just come and join me at the back of the mat in extended child's pose. And we'll start to cool down. Well done, that was a hard one. It's super humid and hot this week, so I hope, I hope you're not sweating too well. I do hope you are sweating, because that shows you've worked out hard. So reach the hands forwards, finding yourself in that extended child's pose, and just take a moment to calm the breath down, slow that heart rate down. So take three deep breaths. So we'll do a quick cool down now. And then for those of you who are able to stick around for another half hour, feel free to join me for slow flow straight after this class and have a full body cool down in a lovely stretchy relaxing flow. A little bit different to this class. From here just walk the hands all the way over to the left. Feel that stretch in the right side body. Take two deep breaths. And then when you take taking two deep breaths, walk the hands all the way back to the centre. As you inhale and as you exhale, walk them all the way over to the right. Take another two deep breaths. Last deep breath all the way in. Exhale. And then walk the hands all the way back to centre. Come up onto your hands and knees. Swivel yourself around, coming down onto your backs now. Bring your knees in towards your chest, hug them with both arms, massage that lower back, and then just gently take your toes to the floor, keep the heels lifted. Arms go out wide in a T-shaped position, palms facing down, and we're just going to drop the knees from side to side for a few window wipers to stretch off that lower back, unravel the spine, massage the glutes and the hips, and also open up that chest and your shoulders too. One more each side, and then gently bring your knees back in towards your chest, hug them with both arms, rock from side to side again, and then whenever you're ready, slowly make your way all the way up to seated. Find yourself in the centre of your mat once again, and then inhale as you lift the hands up above the head, palms together at the top. As you exhale, bring the hands to the forehead, high thoughts, to the lips, kind words to the heart, kind feelings. Namaste.